Welcome to Sweet Tea Messages. For this month and for the rest of the year, we will be focusing on testimonies and stories of how Elohim granted those before us and even present their breakthrough. For this past week, we looked at the story and testimony of the Shunammite woman. This reading was taken from 2 Kings 4, verses 8 through 37. Today's message, we will be focusing on 2 Kings 4, verses 15 to 17, and verses 27 to 30. And it states... And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my master, thou man of Elohim, do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son, at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. 27. And when she came to the man of Elohim to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of Elohim said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her, and Yava hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my master? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins, and take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not, and if any salute thee, answer him not again, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As Elohim liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. Last week, we said this is a testimony of hope lost and hope restored and then tried. This woman was rewarded for her kindness to the man of Elohim with a son. Now, based off this chapter that we read we see here that she could not have a child her husband was up in age and so her response to this blessing to something that she might have been hoping for was a bit bizarre don't you think nay my master thou man of Elohim not lie unto thine handmaid. You would think that she would be bursting with joy after receiving such a promise that she would bear a son. But what happens when reality becomes our truth? When we are so focused on what we see and what we know that a promise like this, in this season, you will bear a son. That you become so full of reality and so full of what you see and what you know to be true that such a promise seems like a deceit, seems like a lie, seems like no, this could not be happening. It seems like this can't be true. Where you should be feeling joy and overwhelming with praise and thanksgiving, you find yourself questioning, can this be true? Could this really be true? This sounds too good to be true. But last week we said that with Elohim, with Elohim, there is no such thing as too good to be true. 
But what happens when that becomes our reality? How do we maneuver? How do we get from a place where we have been hoping and we she probably was praying she probably prayed she probably did everything that she could she probably went to doctors you know what happens when maybe you're not hoping for a child but you're hoping for a breakthrough in your finances a breakthrough for a job a breakthrough in school a breakthrough in a promotion whatever it may be what happens when you've done all that you've you could in your own strength you prayed you trusted you fasted you know you did everything that you possibly could have done you trusted you hoped and nothing came from it and so you push it aside it is what it is maybe it wasn't Elohim's will But look at this story of the Shunammite woman, of how she had probably forgotten about having a child, came to the conclusion that a child is not in my future right now. My husband is old, you know, it just can't be happening right now. A child, it makes no sense to to string myself along with continue to hope you know to continue to hold on to hope that I'd have a child when everything around me is pointing in direction that it's not possible so she had probably you know accepted the fact that this is not going to happen have you accepted the fact that something that you have been hoping for, something that you desired for, you have prayed for, and it hasn't happened. Have you accepted that to be your fact that it can't happen anymore? It's just the way it is. My time has passed. The chance has passed. The opportunity has passed. The position has been filled. No matter what I do, I am still stuck in this cycle. I cannot break this cycle. Have you found yourself in that state? Well, today I am here to remind you of the Shunammite woman who had lost hope of something as a child. Doctors probably have told her that, you know, it's she can't have it anymore she's probably up in age there is no chance for it to happen for her she's infertile her husband probably you know he's old they they can't do anything much you know there's just no chance but who knows that when the world says no that when everything that you see is telling you no when everything you know is telling you no that with Elohim he sees that as an opportunity to blow your mind he sees that as an opportunity to show himself strong on your behalf so today I am here to remind you and I am here to encourage you to keep holding on to faith keep holding on to that hope it will come to pass that promotion that cycle will end hallelujah everything that you are hoping for don't give up don't lose hope and we see that she had lost such a hope that when she received this promise instead of praising and running you know to the al- to the almighty running to say yes i you know i'm excited it's bubbling over a joy that she didn't even remember that there is a elohim who can do exceedingly and above all that she can ever imagine that her response was nay 
do not lie to thy handmaiden. Is that your response today when you receive a message of hope that you this too shall pass you will break the cycle you will come out of your financial situation you will get that promotion that job whatever it is that you had been praying for and it just seemed to not be coming to fruition now in this time when you're getting your promise that hope that thought that will come to you, that it will come to pass and your response what is your response are you saying nay do not lie to thine handmaiden or will you step out on faith to say yes I receive I receive this now as we read that she did have a child she had her child she had her son and this promise came to pass but what happens when what you were hoping for you received it but it was not as you expected it to be she had her son and maybe she thought yes he will live out his days i will get to see him grow into a man and everything she probably was just so bursting with joy in this time that she had received something that she didn't even ask for have you stopped asking Elohim for that what you were hoping for did you stop asking what happens when you didn't even ask for it because you were so lost to hope that you stopped praying you stopped asking you stopped believing and here it comes Elohim blesses you with it a situation happens to put it back in your mind you didn't even ask it to come back up it just happened and here you are you didn't ask for it see in verse 20 of this scripture that the child fell and he was brought to his mother he sat on her knees till noon and then died because he fell and hit his head what happens when what you hoped for and received didn't play out as you expected it she probably had such bright hopes for her child she, you know she probably was just overjoyed that it really happened she really had a child and now he died suddenly he just fell and he died what happens when you got the promotion and it's not as it seemed to be what happens when you're getting your breakthrough and then suddenly you lose it all financially you lost it all what happens when the cycle that you wanted to end you know it came to an end and then it sprung up again what happens do you say to yourself I knew it was too good to be true I knew this could not be real do you lose hope? Do you just throw in the towel and accept that this is my reality? I knew it wasn't going to last long. Or do you remember who told you? Who made you that promise? Who brought it back to life? Who made that situation possible for you? And so in verse 27, you see that she remembered, hold on. I didn't ask for a son I mean I, I was hoping to have one and then I just forgot about it but I didn't ask for this you said you were going to bless me with that child you said you were going to bless me in this way and so she remembered who told her and this is a this is a reminder to you as well remember who made you that promise? Who told you that that was going to pass? Who told you that 
you were going to receive your breakthrough. Remember who told you that. And so she set out on her journey to find this man of Elohim. And that's what we have to do in this season. Find the altar of Elohim. Go back to our father, the one who originally gave us the promise. Go back to him. Go back to the one who you were hoping in, the one who you were believing in. And it's funny that when she met the servant Gehazi of the man of Elohim, he was the servant of the man of Elohim. She saw him along the way because remember, you're going to go set out on your path to find Elohim and everything that the enemy can find to deter your path is going to be thrown to you. Sometimes we want to go to, to Elohim. We want to go back to that altar. But we find ourselves finding comfort in others. Persons who can't really help us. We go to them first before we go to the man of Elohim. Or to Elohim himself. And so she met up with Gehazi, who was the servant of the man of Elohim, who gave her that promise. And he asked her, how is your husband? How is your son? How is, how is everything doing? Sometimes you will have persons in your life who ask you, how are you? Sometimes they don't even want to know really how you're doing and sometimes you have those who really genuinely care but how are you and that's the minute everyone starts to break down we tell everything from here to there we go into details and sometimes they just wanted to hear i'm okay or i'm not okay but i'll be okay soon something you know they're short and spicy But Gehazi was just meeting up with her because his master had commanded him, you know, had sent him to go to her and find out. So really, he's, he doesn't have a genuine interest in what's going on with her. He was just doing it because he was told to ask her how she was, how is everything. But I loved her response. And it's a lesson to us. She said, it is well. Her son passed away. He just died. Her husband is sick. You know, he's old in age. But it is well. That is so powerful that even in the midst of her chaos, in the midst of what seems to be a very unfortunate situation, she could find the strength to say, it is well. Because she knew he couldn't help. So what's the point? You can't help me. And remember, he didn't have a genuine concern as to how she was really doing. He was just doing as he was told. So it is well. Let's use that today. You know, let's use that. It is well. How are you? It is well. I'm standing in the midst of the storm. I got the promotion I needed, but all things are just going wrong. I'm, you know, from left, right, and center. I, I just got a financial breakthrough, and here I am back in the same position. You know, maybe even worse. I just, whatever the situation may be. And you know this person can't really help me. They can only listen. But they can't do anything to really help. Yes, they can pray for me. Which is, you know, simply to say, just pray for me. It is well, but just keep me in your prayers. But they can't physically do anything to change my situation. So it is well. Let's use that as our response today, even in the midst of our storms, in the midst of our trials. It is well. 
her soul was vexed within her. Her soul was vexed within her because she was angry. She was going through the motions, but more so she was angry because verse 28 showed how angry she was. Then she said, did I desire a son of my master? Did I not say, do not deceive me? What happens when you get so frustrated that you become angry with Elohim? You become angry with the person who Elohim may have used as a messenger to bring hope and light in your life. That, that even in the situation that you get so angry with Elohim. Are you angry with Elohim today? It's something that you didn't even ask for and he blessed you with and now it's going left. It's going south. It's going all over the place. What happens when you're angry? Do you not talk to him because you're angry or do you go back to him and say Elohim did I ask for this? Did I desire a son? Did I not say, do not deceive me? I didn't want to believe. I didn't want to hope again. I didn't want to trust again. I didn't want to think that this could be possible for me again. But you let me believe that. You let me believe that. You let me start hoping again. Do you know the power of hope? Sometimes, I always say sometimes to myself that, you know, hope, it's a great thing, but it can be so dangerous. Because when you have hope, and for it to, when, it, when, when the time comes for it to be tested, and you lose that hope that you have been holding on to so tight, it can make or break you. And here you see the woman do, did I not say do not deceive me? You promised me a son. You, you told me. I didn't even come to you telling you I wanted a child. Because I left that hope a long time ago. And you brought it back into me. Into my life. You brought it back. And now look at my son. He is dead. But you see you. What happens when you go to the one who can actually do something about your situation? He just told his servant, Gehazi, gird up your loins, take my staff in your hand, and go thy way. If you meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. Now if she had told Gehazi that, he wouldn't know what to do. When he asked her the first time, he wouldn't have known what to do because he would have probably go back to his master to tell him what she told her, what she told him. So, but when you go to the source, when you go to the one who can do something about it, you see the response is different. Because you actually get what you need. He says, just take my staff and put it on the face of the child, but don't talk to anyone. And sometimes Elohim is doing something in your life that requires you to just be still. That requires you to don't say anything. Don't, don't say a word to anyone. Just do as you're told. Go, put that staff on the child. If anyone greets you, I'm not in the, t you don't even have, don't even answer. Now, some people might look at that and say, oh, it's disrespectful, you know, you, you know, but sometimes when there is great purpose, when there is, when there is something that's on the inside, you can't afford to lose not even an ounce of power, not even an ounce of, you know, that favor, that, that driving force of Elohim. Because you're going to need all the strength you can. You're going to need, you're going to need it. So just walk until you meet that child until you are where you are don't open your mouth and the mother said as Elohim liveth and as thy soul liveth I will not leave thee she
she walked with him. It took great faith for her to go back because she could have stayed in her angry state and just be there. Imagine, I didn't even ask for this. I didn't ask for this. And here it is. I didn't even ask for it. And look now, my child is dead. She could have just accepted it as her fate to say, you know what? I knew I shouldn't have believed that there ended the story. But she knew. I didn't ask for this, so I'm going back to the one who told me that it was possible. Because if he made it when I didn't even hope for it, then he can fix it. He can do something about this situation. And we see here in this chapter that her son was restored back to life. He received life. Because Gehazi did exactly as he was told. But, how, but it's so funny because we didn't even read verses 31 or 32. And verse 31 says, And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awake. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in therefore and shut the door upon them, twain and prayed unto Yahweh. He put his mouth on his mouth, and his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands, and he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. And he did this, and then the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. <laughs> Seven is that number, that number from Elohim, that seven, that divine number. But did you realize that even Geezer, he did as he was told, and the child still did not wake up? Now that's a crucial part because faith, your faith will be tested and tried. And maybe Gehazi didn't, Gehazi didn't have the power. Remember the staff, he just told him to use the staff. So Gehazi could. <laughs> probably you know be questioning what is that staff going to do right now what this sounds crazy put the staff on the child you know so he probably didn't have enough belief or even enough power to do to carry out the work but until the man of Elohim stepped in until Elohim steps into your situation there will be no change. So you have to keep pressing because she said, I will not leave. You won't leave until, I won't stop praying until this situation turns around. Because I didn't ask for it and so I know there was a purpose for it. And Elohim will bless it. Elohim will come through. But do I have enough faith to see this through? Because I didn't ask for it and that was just to restore my faith and my hope in Elohim but there is hope in Elohim so what happens when what you hoped for and received is not what you expected it to be what happens do I just throw in the towel and accept that this was too good to be true in the first place do I give up and say you know what it is what it is. This is just how things are for me. Or do I keep pressing in? Do I go back to Elohim? Do I go back to the source? And see it through. See it through to the end to say, I had faith. It's the mustard seed because I didn't really hope. I didn't even, I didn't believe that this could have even happened in the first place. So it's not really that big faith, it's just that baby faith, that trying faith, that little faith, that little mustard seed faith that just keeps me going, that said, you know what, I will press in, I will press in, because I will come out of this situation. Ellen will make a way. He made the way in 
just bringing me to get the promotion, bringing me a release out of financial problems or just giving me the job or whatever your situation may be that you can apply it to. But she kept pressing, she said, I will not leave until I see a breakthrough, until I see my child restored. I will not leave. I will not leave. Because I, I told you, don't deceive me. I told you. Did I ask you for this child? I didn't ask for it. You brought it to me. You gave it to me. So I won't leave until I see a change. Until I see the restoration. Until I get the breakthrough from this. Because there will be bumps in the road. He didn't tell her that he will live forever. He didn't tell her that he will see out his days until he becomes a man. And he didn't say that to her. He just told her that she's going to have a son. So be, so. He, he really did have a son. She really did have a son. But she was like, no, uh, I'm not just going to have this son and then he's going to fall and, and die. No, he's going to live again. Yes, I had the son, but what is my faith going to do? Because his promise took me here. But where? But where's my faith going to take me? Will my faith take me further? to see this promise through to say you know what he fulfilled because basically he did fulfill his promise you will have a son she had a son so the promise can take you this far but where but your faith hallelujah your faith is what will take you the distance your trust your faith in him your hope in him is what will take you further because if she didn't have the belief to say, you know what, I didn't ask for this son and I got it, but now, now that I have it, I want it and I want to see it through. So no, you can't tell me that my son is dead now. Not when I just started actually believing and hoping. I refuse to believe that you're just going to tell me that I'm going to have a son and he's going to die this young. No, my faith is what's going to push me to say I won't leave until my son is restored I will go back to the source to say listen here is my son so where is your faith taking you in your situation you stopped hoping and Elohim brought it to pass now where will your faith take you will your faith just let you accept that it is what it is it's just Elohim's will if it was supposed to happen if he was supposed to live beyond this age then he would have or will my faith say I will press in I won't stop pressing in I will go back to the source and to see that this comes this is not just it's not gonna just taint me here but my son will live until he's a man you know what is what what will your faith cause you to do and remember it just takes a mustard seed the faith as little as a mustard seed for you to tell a mountain to move now if a little mustard seed can move a mountain imagine what it can do in your life in your situation so don't lose hope. Don't just give in and accept that this is your faith. No, push, press in. As Elohim liveth and as my soul liveth, I will not leave until my situation is restored. Until there is a breakthrough, until something happens, go back to the stories. Men, women, People can't really help. But what Ellen can do, even if the doctors say you can't, if you if you are pronounced whatever it is, the greatest physician is Elohim. 
he made you so he can fix anything he can deliver he can restore so go back to the source go back to the source and that's the title of this message I know it's at the end but that's the title of this message go back to the source I really hope that this message blessed you today and I pray that it brought some encouragement and it activated someone's hope or someone's faith in Elohim to keep pressing in and to go back to the source because he's the only one that can help when it looks impossible he specializes in all things impossible So may Father continue to bless you all and I pray, I pray that where there is a lack of faith or a lack of hope that it will be restored in his name. Father bless you. Until next time on Sweet Tea Messages.